Hello everyone, this is Jason and you're watching the Power Up Review. And today I was thinking about the pros and cons with the Sega Dreamcast and piracy. Or not necessarily piracy, but burning games. Now from what I've heard and what I know about the Dreamcast is just things that I've read online and uh, maybe some YouTube videos that I've seen, things like that. So as like tech specs and things like that, I'm not an expert, but I first came across Burning Games. I always heard about it, but I always thought it was kind of super complicated. Uh, but about four months ago, uh, I really wanted to get into getting imports for my Dreamcast. And I have an American Dreamcast, I'm here in the US. Uh, it's actually the same Dreamcast that I've had since it was picked up on release date uh, back in September of 99. And um, I wanted to get into getting imports, right? So, but I didn't want to have to get a, a, a Japanese Dreamcast and because you know, shipping kills you on that type of stuff. And so I was like, I heard things about like boot discs and then I came across a Utopia boot disc. Now before I decided to try and burn the boot disc, I went online and tried to find different uh, different ones that are available the ones that I found or, or some of them that I've seen they wouldn't say if they would support the VGA format and I heard of the Codebreaker uh, CD uh, courtesy of uh, uh, Adam Korlick uh, awesome YouTube channel you should really check him out big Dreamcast enthusiastic uh, enthusiast enthusiast well I guess he is enthusiastic about the Dreamcast but uh, so, and he had a burnt copy of that, and I was like, well, I can't burn stuff, because it's, it's CDI. I thought it was something insane, but actually, it's pretty easy. And once I went on some forums and figured some stuff out, I burnt myself a Utopia boot disc. And then this way, I'd be able to play Japanese games on my Dreamcast. And then, uh, little by little, I started coming across where uh, uh, there were various websites where they actually offered the, the ROMs or the ISOs or whatever the technical term it is and I thought well you know I'm not gonna worry about that because it's too complicated I, I don't think I have the software or anything like that right but then uh, Volgar the Viking came out and that was a free game that you can burn and you don't need a boot disc actually when you burn it which is really awesome um, it's actually self booting and I figured this would be a, this would be a good time to show off my <laughs> the little the little case that I made uh, for Volgar because uh, you know it, I think it belongs among my other Dreamcast games so you know, they had the, 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 the art that was made by the Dreamcast community on the website that you get the, the, the ROM from or the data from to burn it and everything. So I did that and then uh, that linked me to some other sites. And so I actually found the um, codes for the Codebreaker uh, CD, which was awesome, which you have to burn two CDs. You burn the loader and then you burn the actual Codebreaker itself. So you put the Codebreaker loader in. Uh, you let that thing load and it tells you to pop it out so you pop it out you put the burnt code breaker disc in press start it'll load it up and you hit start game and it has you put the game in and you can do codes which I never messed around with but you could also play import games and the thing about the code breaker what makes it cool is that it forces if it has VGA uh, compatibility in there it'll force it to VGA specs so I had the VGA cable here and everything set it up to where I convert it to HDMI so I can use it on my um, game capture HD and all this other stuff and it's been sitting here so now that I have burned code breaker I can actually use that stuff right and then that kind of got me to thinking well now I have these ROMs or ISOs or whatever you call them and now I can burn them so what should I do and just like any other Dreamcast owner you know there are awesome Dreamcast games out there but they are also expensive and so I remember a game that I used to have uh, when the Dreamcast first came out actually when it first came out for Dreamcast was Cannon Spike which is like a arena shooter type game um, I did uh, uh, there's an episode of uh, Eat Sleep Dream Repeat featuring Cannon Spike so look forward to that if you like the game but it, it usually runs around 110 130 sometimes 160 dollars and I had the game when it first came out, and I wasn't too fond of it. And I regret selling it just because it was the value like is insane. And it's always nice that when you hold on to something and it goes up in value, you're like, oh, I'm glad I kept it. 
but I remember I didn't like the game too much and it wasn't maybe at the time it wasn't my speed uh, so what I ended up doing was I of course I traded into Funko Land at the time stuff like that I got some other Dreamcast stuff so what I decided to do is like you know what here's one of the pros and here's one I support if you're gonna burn a game or pirate a game is if there's a game like Cannon Spike and it is upward to it's expensive even if it was eighty dollars something like that right you burn the game and now of course there's there's not demos or anything like that I man I guess you could maybe get an emulator and try it out but so you burn the game and you try it and if you like it and it's a game that you would like to get then go out and buy it especially if you're a Dreamcast collector now if you're one of these guys that just burns a bunch of games hell look at all the burnt games I got and I got all these games for my Dreamcast and that's why I like the Dreamcast because uh, I get to have burnt games on it this video is not for you you are not a Dreamcast collector it's different it's totally different that's like you're pretty much playing in it you're just as almost as bad as just a guy playing an emulator which is fine if that's how you like to play yourself that's cool but I like having physical copies I like actually having the disc with the book and everything that's how I am with all my games so so this is not for you but uh, so that is the actual one case where burning a game I think I believe is great also with the code breaker thing as well it kind of falls under the same the same category it's not really a game so that's not really a big deal. Um, I was trying to find it online and I couldn't find it online. And you know when I actually was looking to buy it, I came across it before, but it was pretty pricey. And again, it kind of falls under the same thing. If this thing is pricey, burn a copy and see if you like it. Now, if it's like a, a code breaker is a game genie, right? And it's not detrimental it's not super important so I have a burnt copy of code breaker I'm never gonna buy code breaker uh, that's I'm just never gonna buy it I'm not gonna spend the money on it but a game is a different story especially if you like collecting stuff like I do so so I burnt cannon spike I played it I had fun but to me it's not worth the price tag and I guess all oh, rarity da -da 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 -da. yeah I understand but it all depends on how much of game is is uh, how much you enjoy a game is how much it is worth to you. Now, and I'm sorry if I keep rambling. I bought Zero Gunner 2, legit, on eBay, and I spent over $100 for it. Not much, but over $100 for it because I read reviews, I watched videos. This is before I was burning stuff, and I just man the boss battles and stuff and one of my favorite shooter developers made it so I'm like you know what I'm gonna fork out the money for it I did I love it don't regret it at all awesome collection uh, addition to my collection I play it all the time Cannon Spike though if I would have spent the money on Cannon Spike I think the most I would have can is spend on Cannon Spike maybe 80 bucks because um, it kind of gets repetitive and uh, there's not that much uh, variation I mean you have different stages and stuff but you go to a place you kill bad guys you fight a boss you go to a place you kill bad guys you fight a boss and maybe zero gun, gun or two might have, have kind of have the same thing except you're like shooting all around but you're you're mo it gives you the illusion that you're moving so you get more pro more progression but can it can and spike is you know you go someplace you shoot guys you fight a boss next map you go someplace you shoot guys you, fight, you, you, you don't even like you're not even like traveling to go to the map you're just in a room the room could be outside but either way you're in a place with four barriers four walls and you're in that place shooting guys shooting bad guys you fight a boss and then all of a sudden boop now you're in the next area same thing now you're in the next area same thing now you're in the same thing and it's over and over and so the price tag to me wasn't worth it so and I'm glad I burnt it. I'm glad I didn't try. I've been kind of looking for it. I've been kind of 50-50, uh, maybe 60-40 on trying to get it. But now that I, bur that I burnt it, I tried it. Uh, if I come across it cheap, of course I'll pick it up because it's an awesome addition to your collection. As for the price, it's not worth the price. I don't think so. So, and uh, 
in a case like this, I think if you if there's a game out there that's super expensive and you're kind of on the fence about it and you watch YouTube and stuff like that and you know you might want to get it, you might not, whatever, and you say yeah, you know just burn a copy, burn a copy, try it out. You might really like the game and you want to go buy it. Uh, next, I'm gonna I hear I keep hearing mixed reviews on Bangio. Yay, nay, whatever. I I downloaded the the HD one on Xbox 360. Um, tried it, wasn't too fond of it, but I heard the Dreamcast one is cooler and it kind of has a certain charm to it. So I'm gonna burn Bang I.O. I'm gonna try it. And if I like it, then I'm gonna keep an eye out for it and I'm gonna look for it. At the same time, though, what makes the Dreamcast cool with the whole burning games and being able to use burnt games is that you have indie developers like NG Dev Team, and it you know it's great that they just recently announced that they're gonna start doing Dreamcast games again, but they stopped because of piracy issues and so if, if you're a Dreamcast enthusiast and you want to see these independent developers release games and support the Dreamcast community you know by releasing new content in 2015 2016 in the future then I would highly recommend buying those games now you're if you're on the fence and you don't want to spend $70 if you don't want to spend, you know, ninety dollars on a limited edition of Ghost Blade, you know, ninety-nine dollars shipped, whatever, you know, and you can get a burnt copy, maybe that's your best bet is to maybe try it. But if you like the game, support the developers that are taking the time to put them in these awesome cases with this awesome art on it, and then they take the time to print up posters to put with limited editions and things like that. If you like the game, buy it. Support these independent developers. It it's good that NG Dev Team said they're going to start doing Dreamcast games again because their Dreamcast games are really good, and I've been looking forward to buying some. And there's not even no if I'm going to check it out and if I like it, I'm going to burn it. No, I'm just going to buy them because I know they're good. But if you're kind of on the fence on the price points and stuff like that, and at the same time too, you get an Xbox One game, you get a PlayStation 4 game, you buy an Xbox 360 game, they're all like 60 bucks. Man, these Dreamcast games, some of them are better than the games you get now. So if you spend $60 on a Dreamcast game, depending on what game, if you really like that game, it's definitely worth it. I bought Mega Man 2 for my NES, my NES, for 30 bucks. Well, it's an old game. Oh, blah 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 blah. I'm not spending thirty dollars on an old game. I could just get the ROM and emulate. Blah, blah. I have a physical copy of Mega Man 2. It's one of my favorite Mega Man games. It actually, is my favorite Mega Man game. Is it worth thirty bucks to me? Heck yeah. Why? Because hell, half of these sixty dollars games that come out ain't even worth the sixty bucks. So that's something for you to decide. But if you if burn a game, check it out. Play. It. If you like it, try and go get the game. You know what I mean? You're supporting the Dreamcast community, especially for these independent developers. You know, uh, Hughcast has been getting some heat on the difficulty of Ghostblade and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm waiting for my copy to get in. Um, I'm kind of a, I'm not that picky on shmups. So if it, if you blow stuff up and it looks colorful and cool stuff's happening on screen, I'm happy. But uh, maybe lack of modes and stuff like that. But then there's a the case right there. If you burnt Ghostblade, right, and then you tried it out and you didn't like it. Well then, okay, cool. You know, you know what? I'm not gonna get that, but you know what? I'm gonna buy Gunlord instead because Gunlord's awesome. Yeah. So if you burn a game and you like it, buy it. Don't just burn a game and be a jerk and not support these independent developers because then they're not going to develop for the Dreamcast anymore. And I'm sorry, but I mean, who's developing for the PlayStation 2 that supposedly killed the Dreamcast? You know, and granted, it's you know I'm sure piracy is harder on that, and you, people don't do it. But if you wanted the Dreamcast to keep going, like I said support the independent developers. There's nothing wrong with burning games and trying it, but if you like the game, give it a shot. Go buy it. You know what I mean? Support the Dreamcast community. So I, that's what I think the pros and cons of of burning games. It's one of the coolest things that the Dreamcast can do. It's also kind of its downfall. But again, if I would have bought cannon spike for 160 bucks not that i would have but if i got crazy and did i would be severely disappointed and severely jaded so this is jason with the power review that's just kind of my rant i hope you guys enjoy it if you like what you see like 
leave me a comment let me know what your opinion is on this discussion you know I always like hearing from you guys I'll reply to all my comments you know just because I like I said I like hearing from you guys I like talking with you guys so again as always take it easy <laughs>